So here I am in sunny Somerset, and I've arrived without the aid of Sat Nag in my car as well. Coal was discovered in Radstock in 1763 and continued until 1973. So I'm here to ride the Two Tunnels Greenway all the way into Bath. The Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway was created in 1862, probably to ship coal way before passengers. And then the extension to Bath was opened in the 1870s. And this meant going through two long tunnels, well, one very long tunnel, Coombe Down Tunnel, which we'll be cycling through later. Yep, all the way into Bath Green Park Station. Shortly after arriving at the start of the actual Greenway Trail, <laughs> I noticed a sign saying steep hills in one and a half miles. I'm thinking, hang on, steep hills? I thought this was on the flat all the way up. Anyway, I press on regardless. So I'm on National Cycle Route 24, which, if I'd done my research properly, would have told me I'm not on the actual railway track at this particular point in Radstock. Problem is, where I'm parked, I have a maximum of four hours stay, and it's a 70 pounds fine if I overshoot that. So do I turn back? Thinking now, maybe I should have gone to Midford and started from there. Uh, but I press on, I press on, and I'm thinking, uh, Well, somewhat off the track there, I think, because that wasn't the original railway track. I just came up a very steep hill. Woo. Morning. Thank you. Okay, we're now, well nearly, on the old railway track. <sighs> Eventually I find the trail and I'm on the route and uh, I get onto the railway track but I'm thinking I'm never going to get back in time. I want to go into Bath, I also want to go around the Can and Avon Canal, all the way around to uh, Dunstan uh, Aqueduct back to Midford, do the tunnels again, before heading back to Radstock. So, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. I've gotta make a decision, stop now, go back, get the car, drive up to Midford, and start all over again. I'm now on the right track at last, thank goodness. I'm on Midford Station, if I can keep my bike steady. Uh, the GoPro's mounted on the bike, uh, it might be wobbling a little bit, like me. Right, I started off at Radstock, cycled halfway here, realised because my car parking was only for a couple of hours, I wouldn't uh, be able to get back in time, since I want to go to Bath and way around the Kent and Avon Canal, <laughs> and then back. Uh, I knew I'd make it in time, so I've driven up here to Midford eventually, found somewhere to park, luckily, and I'm now on Midford's old railway station, though you'd never believe it, but there's a platform here, which I'm on, and I'm about to head off on the two tunnels route now into Bath. So, let's crack on. Okay, this is my wheels for today. It's not my bike, but I've got my GoPro mounted on the front. It happens to be my daughter-in-law's bike. <laughs> which she's loaned to me and I'm going to be using until I get my own mountain bike again. Okay, so this is take two really. Abandon the Radstock to Midford uh, route. Oh, there's an old station building there, part of it. 
Wow. And we're riding alongside the platform. <laughs> Heading towards Coombe Down Tunnel. Longest walking tunnel in Britain, apparently. If not Europe. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, let's go. Morning ladies. Morning. We've got a bridge. A tunnel. A short tunnel. Yeah. How long is short tunnel? Oh the old bell sounds good in here. Morning. Ah. They're thinking, who's this idiot? <laughs> Come down here to Somerset, out in the country. Yeah. Ah. I'm about two hours later on this route now than I intended to be. But I'm here, that's the main thing. Eventually. Oh, there's a castle up there. After Midford Castle comes Tuckin Mill Viaduct and I make a note to go down to the lake below for some shots on my return. I'll have to tune my bell at them in a moment. <laughs> oh, I love the bell. <laughs> Thanks girls. Local and lottery funding, aided by Sustrans, combined to reopen the Coombe Down and Demonshire tunnels back in 2013. So now you can walk or cycle all the way into Sunny Bath. Fantastic. I'm the idiot abroad. Oh, this is awesome fun. Oh, this tunnel out here. Just like going into a cave, it's really, really cold in here. fireman, became asphyxiated by the uh, smoke and fumes from the loco, passed out and ended up crashing further down the line. Blimey. Whew. Yeah. This, is, this tunnel was uh, unventilated. So, uh, over a mile long. Yeah. Hello Hal, didn't realise you could play music, as well as controlling a spaceship. <laughs> Hello Nige, hope you're enjoying the sounds. Yeah man. Can't say I rate the tinny music in Coombe Down Tunnel. I think something from Hans Zimmer or Pink Floyd would have been my choice. Something melodic anyway. Hiya. Coombe Down Tunnel opened in 1874 and was once the longest without additional ventilation at 1,829 yards or 1,672 metres. Yep, that's pretty long. Well, it's getting lighter. Oh, 
nice sunny July day. Devonshire Tunnel arrives shortly after Coombe Down and then it's downhill all the way to Bath. This is 480 yards long. <laughs> That's it, I can't remember. Right, here we go. engines can get their gradients like this. Aha. This carved steel portrait bench is outside the north side of Devonshire Tunnel. They feature a Roman centurion who founded the Roman Baths in AD 60, I wasn't around then, and John Patch, a local war hero of the Great War, and Amy Williams, an Olympic gold medalist, also from Bath. That's Devonshire Tunnel done. Bath next. En route I pause to read the interesting info boards and this one's in Linear Park. Maybe I shouldn't ride on the footpaths, but as I'm not 100% sure where I'm going, I deem it safer to do so. Well, I've made it to Bath. I'm by the River Avon and uh, on the outskirts of the city centre. I'm just going to make my way now to the old Bath Green Station, which is uh, apparently a flea market at weekends. But uh, as soon as I get there, I'm up for a coffee. Yeah, definitely. Right. Anyway, it's fantastic. Been a fantastic ride so far. So, we're going along the towpath now. And this is where we're heading. Morning. This is lovely, this is the life. <sighs> After a bit of a full start this morning, it's coming together nicely now. All I've got to do is avoid falling into the river. <laughs> Head down. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, it's plastic, unfortunately. Sadly. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm looking for Bath Green Station, not quite sure which one to take. Well, this must be Green Park Park. Yeah, which means the station must be very close. Yep. We're taking another turn, but... Uh... And sure enough it is. What I've got to do now is find my way into it. I think probably by the car park. Bath Green Park Station opened in 1870, but now, sadly, it's a brasserie, car park and flea market, and it was the terminal station of the S&D Railway in Bath. Right, this is the old station, well, car park. Aside from its beautiful Georgian facade, it's great to see it still has its huge glass canopy. If you were thinking of taking a train from this station, you'd be waiting a long, long time. And it's the end of the line for me as I relax with a coffee. Yeah. So I'm using Filmic Pro for the well, first time in anger, if you like. Just set on auto at the moment. Part two of my mini adventure will feature my ride through Bath and along the Kennet and Avon Canal. Coming soon, folks.